Today we're going to be learning about interactive posters, how to make them, how to use them, and how they can make your classroom amazing. To make any poster interactive, I first have to have something posted to the journal. I can do that from an activity or by going to the Green Plus and posting student work, but as soon as things are completed, I can then make any poster interactive. The content that's on it and how you use it really doesn't matter, it just has to be posted to the journal. To make any of our posters interactive, we're going to use all the Seesaw built-in tools to add a QR code layer to this and different interactions on the poster itself so that students can scan it and they can interact with it in very unique ways. To do that, I'm going to start at the journal post for my interactive poster. I'm going to go down to the three dots and go to Get Post QR Code. This is going to open a unique QR code that's going to go to this item itself. I'm going to copy this image. I can also save this somewhere if I want to, but I'm simply going to copy and then paste it back onto this page itself. Let's go back to the journal post here, and then I'm going to go and paste it on. So let's go to the three dots, go to edit post, and I'm going to use the keyboard shortcuts command V or control V if you're on a Windows computer to paste that QR code. If I happen to save that somewhere, I can simply upload it by going to the camera and upload, or I can drag it in from wherever it is on my computer. So I have the code on the canvas itself. I'm just going to put it somewhere where it's not covering up any content, and it still is scannable by students. While I'm in here, I can continue to add some more layers. Let's add audio directions to just number one. I'm going to go to the text box, click T just one time, and then add one space. From here, I'm going to go to the three dots and change the style to be the far left style, which means that everything is transparent. I'm going to move this over, and then I'm going to resize it so it just fits over this yellow border. So it almost looks as if this square itself is what I'm interacting with. From here, I can go to the three dots and add my voice instructions. I'm going to just click this and read the directions. Cut at least eight small pieces of paper. Check. So now I've added the audio instructions to this specific block, and I can continue to do that throughout. I can also add in a microphone recording, which would allow me to screen record the whole page. Maybe I wanted to walk students through it uh, using the magic pencil pointer. Before I hit the check and stop editing, I just want to make sure that all my clips play and they all work for students. I don't actually have to lock anything in place because this code will allow it to be previewed for students and not actually edited. I'm going to click the check so that I am finished editing this post. You can see it's going to update itself with that QR code in place along with the voice instructions that I gave for number one. Now to hand this out to students, I'm going to do one of two things to be able to share it. I can go to the three dots and then I can go to save the item. If I do this, this will allow it to download as a collection like this and it's going to give me that specific page exported as a screenshot. Saving the item is going to allow it look just like this, which means that you can print it and you can make it available wherever you so need to for your students. The second way is simply to just click on it to preview and then take a screenshot using your favorite screenshot tool. I can simply hover over this area like this, snap my screenshot, and then I have my preview just as if I did if I saved that item itself. One tip if you do do a screenshot is make sure you don't cut off any of your QR code or else it won't be able to scan for students. So to provide this for students, you can print this, you can have this available for somebody uh, in a paper copy, or you can simply have this be something that's up on top of a digital board, or it's available on a device itself. When students scan the code, they're going to get a view just like this. Again, it didn't matter that we locked any of the items because this is a preview for students. They don't have the creative tools available, but they can still interact with voice and video that you have embedded on these layers. This interactive poster gives students all the tools that they need without having you having to make extra copies or simply walk students through something multiple times.
You can provide them the supports that they need in a digital version, all within Seesaw's tools. I hope you enjoyed how to make interactive posters inside of Seesaw, and I hope that you're going to find this helpful in your classroom, regardless of the content you choose to use it for. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to go to web.seesaw.me lessons to see what we're working on next.